Good morning guys, in this video, we're gonna be sharing with you best things to do in this beautiful island of Koh Lanta. We're starting the morning off with the Moon Koh Lanta National Park. It's at the very southern tip of the island and it's full of gorgeous nature, a plethora of wildlife, greenery. You can snorkel here, there's a bunch of beaches and there's even a lighthouse. Let's go check it out. We'd have the best start to our morning. First, we had a flat tire in our scooter and then they gave us a new scooter, but it doesn't accelerate very well. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to drive out of here without having to push it up the hill. So after we go see the lighthouse, let's see if we can make it back to our Airbnb. And there it is, the giant POS. <laughs> I do recommend coming here as soon as they open, which is 8.30 a.m. We're here at nine o'clock, and it's already so hot here. Also, another nice thing about coming in the morning is the animals are more active, and there's no other people here. We're the only people in this park right now, and it's really peaceful and enjoyable when you're in the shade. Not right now in the blazing sun. <laughs> It kind of slightly reminds us of Manuel Antonio National Park in Costa Rica, but it's not nearly as hot as that park. We were dying there. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you go check it out right here. So I didn't realize that the national park is not just this southern tip of Koh Lanta, it's also some of the surrounding islands. So it's also a ton of marine life. And I guess there's an island called Koh Ha and it's great for diving. And I kind of want to go dive there now. So we might check that out and maybe later in the video you'll see some diving from Koh Ha. Or maybe not. But either way, know that you can go diving at Koh Ha. Know that this national park consists of more than just this southern peninsula point. And as you can see, if you come early, you'll be rewarded with a beach all to yourself, so why not? One nice thing, once you get off the hips of the lighthouse, there is shade from the lighthouse. But wow, it's hot up here. The trail's not super difficult, but I will say it is some climbing, so you definitely have to be somewhat in shape, not a ton, but Definitely not wheelchair accessible. And if you'd like, there are some little restaurants and little snake, snake, snack. There's snakes if you're hungry. <laughs> there's snakes if you're hungry. Little snake, sna oh my gosh. Little snack shop vendor things here. Yeah, there's also, I think, hotels or like bungalows you can stay in here in the national park. No idea on the cost or any of them. I'm tired, it's hot. Let's see if we can make it up this hill. Ready? Hold on. I get off? I don't know yet, Maddie. All right, I'm gonna get off. We did not make that. <laughs> we didn't make it. Let's see if Pat can make it on his own. Well, Pat's going back down. He's going for attempt two, while I am hiking it. My glutes are burning. You got it! You got it! Lanta's entire western side of the island is filled with gorgeous, pristine beaches. Now that we're done with the national park, we're just gonna work our way up the island, going up north and stopping at some of our favorite beaches. First up is Klong Cha. It's a gorgeous beach, not too long, not too short. There's only a couple restaurants here though, so it's very laid back, very chill. I think there's maybe only six other people on this entire beach right now. So at Klong Chok Beach, there's a nice long dirt path that takes you to the beach and there's some parking. Here at Nui Beach, you're at the top of a hill and the parking is just this little dirt area right off the side of the road. Now we're gonna hike down the hill and go check out this very secluded little bay. It's called Nui Bay. So there's no sign up at the parking lot area, but once you start hiking down, there is this sign. So you kind of just have to know where you're going and Google Maps will be your best friend. Ah! 
Oh, the clear water in Thailand never gets old. It feels so good. One thing I like about Quang Jok Beach, and I think it's called New Bay Beach or Nui Bay Beach, is that they're just quiet. There's not a lot of people. There's a couple small restaurants. You can get a massage and a cocktail if you want. Cat, cat. Got it. So we are here at Nui Beach right at 11 o'clock. It's a very short beach, kind of in a little cove bay. Probably bay since it's called Nui Bay. <laughs> On the far left side of the beach though, there is a ton of shade from the trees, which is very nice because a lot of the beaches don't have a bunch of shade. So that's another bonus. We're here in January and the weather has been perfect. Gorgeous blue skies. I don't think we've had rain once yet. Gorgeous sunsets. And that's because we're here during the dry season. The dry season is gonna run from, I believe, November to April and temperatures are going to get very very hot right around this time so it's toasty so you definitely need shade that's why nui bay is going to be our favorite beach so i just discovered that there's the new bay which is where we're at but there's also new beach throughout this little video clip i've been calling it new beach which is not accurate we're at new bay which is very close to the klong chalk beach which is close to the national park new beach is more of in the middle of the island, right underneath the Lanta Beach. We've never been there, so I don't know how it is, but just know there are two different ones. I'm sure New Beach is just as gorgeous. Well, I almost broke Maddie's back getting here, but we have made it to beautiful beach. And as the name suggests, it is a gorgeous beach. It is just right above Klong Chong Beach. And Klong Chong Beach is more of the party area. So if you want to get away from that and relax, then beautiful beach is a perfect spot. There's a bunch of parking, there's shade, and there's one little beach bar shack here. If you need any break from all the crazy beaches, we highly recommend you come to the International Meditation Center. Here, you're gonna be in group meditations led by monks. This happens every single day at noon. Google Maps will lead you right here. If not, this is the sign you're gonna to wanna to look for coming off the roadway. We didn't have time to do this today, but we have done it in the past while we've been staying here in Koh Lanta, and we can attest it is so magical and peaceful when you're up there. While you're in Koh Lanta, you can take a boat or kayak trip into the mangroves. We're not gonna do it on this visit to Koh Lanta because we did a full mangrove tour in Langkawi, Malaysia. If you haven't seen that video, click the link here or here. Either way, watch that video to give yourself an idea of what it's like to go through the mangroves. You'll see a bunch of aquatic life, monkeys, and a whole bunch of other exciting things. We made it to Old Town. This is gonna be where the first civilization of Koh Lanta was first formed. We're standing here on the pier, which goes on for forever. The views from this pier are incredible. You're also gonna see the famous shipwreck. The best part here though is gonna be the walking street. There you can see how some of the locals live. There's a ton of different restaurants and a lot of souvenir shops. Let's go check it out. I think I'm gonna get a shirt. One thing I've noticed walking through Old Town already is that prices for clothing and stuff is way cheaper than the other islands we've went so far in Thailand. So I might get a shirt or two. How about <laughs> What do you guys think of my new fit? I got it for six US dollars and I look good. Just ordered a mango and a passion fruit shake, and they're only 50 baht here, which is a dollar fifty US. And everywhere on the beach, I think we were paying around a hundred baht. So I'm definitely taking advantage of it because passion fruit shakes are my favorite. And mango shakes are mine. So good. And it's been such a hot day that I have needed this. My I'm very, very sunburned. What are you doing? Brain freeze. It's so 
good. And if shakes aren't really your thing and you'd rather have some good craft beer, you can check out Big Tree Beer Garden. Unfortunately, Pat and I are taking a three month hiatus from drinking. Otherwise, we'd be in there. Okay, so when you're on Walking Street here in Old Town, there are a ton of restaurants to choose from. We are stopping at Grandma's house though and getting a mango crumble with ice cream. It's the last one, just in time. That's to die for. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can order a mystery meal. It's a three course meal and you have no idea what it is, but you can be sure it's gonna be delicious here at Grandma's house. Being on the east side of Kolanta makes us feel like we're on an entirely different island. It's more calm, rural, and we really, really love visiting Old Town. We're kind of regretting we didn't stay a couple nights here. There's just a lot of good restaurants. It's very relaxed and just a chill atmosphere. And plus, look at this shirt I scored. You can't really beat that. While the west side is full of gorgeous white sand beaches, the east coast is full of dense mangrove forests, and there's some beautiful surrounding islands that make for the views when you're sitting on the restaurants over here, gorgeous. We highly recommend you come check out Old Town. You won't be disappointed. Well, there are so many amazing things to do while visiting Koh Lanta, the National Park, all of the beaches, Old Town, scuba diving. That's not even our favorite thing to do here. We think the best thing to do is go to Following Giants, the True Ethical Elephant Sanctuary. If you haven't yet watched that video, you can click the link above. Here are some of our favorite clips from Following Giants. how big they are until they do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, back to the video. The area near the start of the Lanta Klong Nin Beach is crazy. There are so many restaurants, so many little food vendors, and there's fruit stands. This 7-Eleven is always bussing. <laughs> Pat just ran in, grabbed us some drinks. We are gonna now head to our favorite beach and enjoy the beautiful sunset. There's also a Muay Thai gym at Lanta Klong Nin Beach. So if you want to take a Muay Thai class while you're visiting Koh Lanta, if you're not up for a Muay Thai class, you can go to one of the fights. There's a fight every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. You can learn about this because there's a truck blaring when the fight is all day long. That one right there driving around, you can't miss it. But check it out, it's 800 baht per person to go to the stadium and watch the fight. You might be interested in it. Drink some beer, have some popcorn, and watch people beat the shit out of each other. Hi, Maggie. Hi. What are doing? Just enjoying this beautiful sunset from Lanta Klong Nin Beach. This beach is super close to where we're staying at, but it's probably our favorite beach. You can find secluded areas where no one's around you, but then there's also a ton of bars and restaurants here. A lot of the bars do sell um, the devil's lettuce, the flower, the yes. grass, whatever you want to call it. They sell that. There's, It's also legal here. So you can find a bunch of dispensaries here where it's like legit. Yeah. Was not expecting that here in Thailand. And you can smoke in the restaurants, in the bars. It's kind of crazy. Another thing is you can get happy shakes um, I'll let you look that up. You can get happy shakes here. We recommend you get one from Charlie Barley's. And that's all I gotta say. All right, so that's a wrap on a full day in Koh Lanta. So far, we think this is our favorite Thailand island. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite island in Thailand is. We're gonna sit back, relax, enjoy the sunset, and we will see you next week.